Puff Daddies. 50 some degrees, about five o'clock. Time changes, what's up, dog? In the last video you saw, we said goodbye to the smoker craft. And so today, say hello to the Trekker. The new Pro 170, 2020. She is brand new. Picked her up about two weeks ago. She's been cooped up in the garage with the snow and everything. But long time coming. Brand new 2020 Tracker Pro 170. So I'm using this new tripod that I bought. It's bendy and can stick to things. And I can do all this. Not just be all up close and whatever. So uh, we're going to start with the boat tour. Today is uh, Thursday, March 5th. This coming Sunday, it's supposed to be about 60 degrees. I'm gonna head out to one of the local inland lakes and we're gonna start breaking in the motor. So this motor is brand new, the whole boat is brand new. Again, 2020, 2020 boat, 2020 trailer, 2020 motor. Um, there is a 10 hour break in period. Um, always read your manual. I've got it in here ready to go. Uh, first hour specific instructions, two to five hour specific instructions, and then the last five hours of the break-in period. Um, you can run it up to full bore for five minutes at a time, and then no more than that. Varying speeds and RPMs. Um, so it's going to be fun. Going to get out there for a couple hours. I want to get at least three hours of break-in done and fish in between. Um, only problem with that is three hours of break-in means three hours of running the motor. So basically I'll be going out to burn gas. Um, gonna knock out an hour of straight running, just taking laps, uh, then fish for a bit, knock out a second hour, then fish for a bit, and then as much as I can get beyond that. Once I get into the last five hours of the break-in, um, I'm not too concerned because I'll be able to run it at full throttle. Uh, and then once I hit the 10 hour mark, um, be good to go, so. Um, well, let's go ahead and give you a tour of the brand new boat. I'm so excited. I miss the old boat. Uh, thank you to Uncle Albert. You got it. Oh shit. Um, for letting me have that boat. Uh, had a lot of fun on it. It was just time to move on. Four years. Um, so, all right, let's start with the tour. Okay, so we're gonna start at the back of the boat and uh, move forward. So again, you got uh, the brand new Mercury 2020 four stroke jet drive. Uh, my old boat topped out at about 26 miles an hour uh, with two men, three men. Obviously, it's probably about 22 to 25. This will top out at 30 to 33. So it's a 40, which is fine, um, but it's faster than the old boat uh, by four or five miles an hour, which is perfectly fine for us. So as you know, we like to fish the rivers 30 miles an hour up or downstream. Uh, it's plenty fast. And for shallow rivers, like on the East Coast, you need and want a jet. Um, so again, 40, brand new. I'm not gonna take the cover off. You all know what a motor looks like. Um, got our power trim back here, as well as on the throttle. Uh, it's very nice to have. The old boat did not have a power trim, so I would always have to keep it unlocked. So if we would hit a rock going downstream or upstream, the motor would just come up like this on its own on a hinge, then slam back down. So now as I'm running or floating, I can keep the motor up. If I'm running real shallow, I can keep it trimmed up so I still get power and can go. Let's show you this. And then it's got, um, it's got its lock too. So obviously you don't need a transom saver because there's no transom. The lower end is the actual jet and the impeller. So you got this little knob right here. Bring it down, lock it in place. She's not going anywhere. Wanna bring her back down. That's just for travel only. Pops right back out, locks in. And she goes down on her own. So it's very nice to have. It's gonna come in handy at the ramp while running, while floating. Um, and it's just badass to have a lift. So we got our trailer light package, standard. I like that it does have the running light on the beam of the trailer. Um, all the way across so very simple uh, these are the toe straps that came with the tracker the whole thing was one big package um, I did pick the motor and all my accessories I built my own boat so to speak uh, 
These straps are not that great. I'll keep them in the boat for extra, but I went and bought a three inch rod saver uh, hooks. Um, I had them on the old boat and they were the best. Um, so I bought those, a nice little upgrade. Um, so we're good to go there. Um, again, these aren't bad. They're just not that great. Um, you know, kind of flimsy and yada yada. And I just know from when I had dirt bikes and quads, that once you bend these one time, they're pretty much no good. So I'll keep them as extra. Um, portable battery charger. I always just keep it on the boat. Um, plug it into my garage unit. So trickle charge and keep things rolling very, very nicely. Um, so back at the boat. So I do like that our outtake has a screen on it. It uh, keeps schmutz from coming out. Drains a lot nicer too. Got your plug hole right there. Uh, speedometer. I assume this thing's gonna break off running the shallow rivers, which is fine. Um, and then you got your little sonar for the uh, Lawrence screen that I opted for. It's a little four inch screen. Hang on, take this off. Little four inch screen, fish finder, depth finder, GPS, all that. I can download all the latest maps. What's up, buddy? Can download all the latest maps. I'm not gonna mount it or power it right now, but it goes nicely here. Nice little swivel stand and all that. So that will be nice to have. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, inboard gas tank, holds 14 gallons. So that's always nice too, same on the old boat can fuel up at the pump got your ball uh, all that good stuff um, so we got our hubs uh, there are steps on the wheel wells which are nice uh, you know helps out a lot instead of just having to hop up on the gunnel it's got the little running lights on there too <clears throat> wheel bearings and all that easy system or whatever the hell you call it so all I got to do is keep them greased I should never have to replace these maybe in 10 years. Uh, latest technology, so that's always good to have. Um, shorter bunks, which makes it a little bit easier. I always liked having the longer ones on the old boat as a guide to get in there. But this gives you a little less room for air, but that's fine. Um, and then actual longer bunks to run the boat on, which I do like quite a bit. So a solid axle. Uh, single axle as well trailer uh, three crossbars so trailer is very very heavy duty it's also powder coated it was a couple extra bucks but that's fine <sighs> again this is a tracker tracker has a warranty on all welds it's an all welded hull with a lifetime warranty so any of these ever bust they take all my power accessories and give me a brand new boat I'm not gonna complain about that um, cleats bow stern port aft four cleats um so we'll run up here then we'll get in the boat i know this video is going to be long but that's fine so we got our 1200 pound jack brand new upgraded that uh should never have an issue um also the foldable tongue lock this is huge having a two-car garage i can now fit a car in there with the boat and it'll back in there nicely and fit very nice tie down engineering system um, you know, so I'm saving two, two and a half feet easily. Um, I always keep my tongue locked too, whether it's in the garage or on my truck. If someone wants to steal it, they're going to have to at least cut the lock. And if they want to cut the lock and go to all that trouble, they very easily can. A uh, very nice winch and stopper. we got the carabiner and then also the hook. I don't know if you can see that well, but it's opted for both. Just to be safe, one breaks. You got the other on lock. I do like this too, that I don't have a spare yet. I haven't gotten around to getting one, um, but the spare is actually mounted underneath. There's no need for one on the side. I don't have to keep one in the truck. 40 pound thrust Minn Kota Edge. It's pretty badass. I'm excited to see how it's gonna hold up on Sunday. It's supposed to be a little windy, so we'll find out. I'm not sure how it's gonna do on the river. Uh, the old boat was about the same size, probably weighed a little less, but it was a 55 pound thrust and that moved the boat, completely moved it. Um, never had an issue with power going downstream, flooded current, any of that. Um, so need anything else specifically, I'll upgrade this uh, to a 55 or an 80 
and then I can go ahead and sell that. So not too concerned. Uh, we'll just see how it does. It's not going to give me any problems on the flat water, but we do do a lot of river fishing, so uh, we'll go from there. Edge foot pedal. Got five speed, mom and con directional. I also like compared to the old Minn Kota, I mean, mine was like a 2005, I believe, because you got your tie down strap nice and secure, and then uh, your handle to launch and retrieve. So it is a 17 foot Pro 170. Um, got your captain's chair, your co pilot's chair, Gilligan, and the skipper. Uh, got your screwable seat mounts. So what's nice about these now, based on the old technology, this is a huge upgrade. Uh, the seat poles are threaded. So I always fish off the back. I don't sit when I fish either. So you screw them in and then they're not going nowhere. The seats mount in the top. I got the other seat on the shelf in there. I'll keep the bow one with me for Canada or whoever likes to use it. I just don't sit and I always fish off the back. So they're threaded, not going nowhere. Unscrew it. Pull it right out. Never have to grease it up or nothing. And it's really, really in there too, so you're not going to have much play side to side if you're bouncing around or motoring. Um, so that's nice. Um, go back here. I guess we'll just start back here as well. Uh, so like I said, 14 gallon inboard gas tank. I know some of the cheaper tracker models just have a 5 to 10 gallon and it's literally just a red jerry can style that's um, strapped in there. I did not like that at all, nor was I going to buy one of those smaller Tracker Heritage Pros anyway. They're nice, just not my thing. Um, then we got our 24 volt crank battery and our 24 volt uh, Minn Kota battery. So obviously the crank battery will be recharged by running the motor. The uh, Minn Kota battery um, will not. So I do have my portable charger. I always keep it with me anyway. But it makes it easy because it's in the boat. I don't have to take it out to charge it like on the old boat. Just run it down from my power strip hanging from the ceiling, plug it in, and it's charged. So when I'm about to pull the boat out, just unplug it. We're good to go. Um, compared to the old boat, so the wire job is very clean and crisp. I'm going to try and get down in there. But you got your bilge, live well, all that good stuff, fuel line, throttle cable. Uh, very, very clean. Uh, on the old boat, my Minn Kota battery would not fit in the rear terminal or in the rear compartment, I'm sorry. So we had it up in the bow. There was a V-deck construction with those doors, so getting the battery in was a pain in the ass, and then taking it out to charge it was a pain in the ass, so this makes life very nice and easy. Uh, there's the Lowrance screen. Uh, I always keep a boat box. You've probably seen this in the other videos. Just a couple things, clippers, a pen just in case, a couple extra plugs, multi-tool, a whistle, toothpicks, a lighter, a couple flashlights. So this is just where I keep everything dry on the boat, things I may need at any time. So it's dry and it floats too. Um, plenty of storage on this boat, which is great. Got some bungee uh, nylon and then 100 foot of anchor line. Um, got my manual in here and my temporary registration. I'm going to get my actual reg and plates tomorrow, but this was good for 45 days from the day I took purchase of the boat. Um, put together. Let me just look at all this storage. So I got a 3700 series in there and this 36, just of things I keep on the boat. So here you got my NASBLA card, basically your boater's license. I'm always good, you need that on deck. I'll put a copy of my fishing licenses in here too. Multi-tool, electrical tape, just a good luck lure. Little Phillips head, spark plug gapper, another multi-tool, tape measure, and a lighter. Just a few things that I'll always have on the boat. Keep them dry and stored. I suggest you do the same. This will never leave the boat. You can add to things, add things to it as need be. And then the 3700 series, same thing. So both of these are supplies that I will always keep on the boat. So in here, a couple rain ponchos, extra bottle of bug spray, a uh, pair of warm hand gloves, extra pair of socks. Um, hand sanitizer, extra bungee cord, first aid kit. Always have a first aid kit on board, even if it's just a cut. Sanitizing wipes, some big rubber gloves for catfishing, all that stuff. Little towel. And then 
my socket wrench that fits the uh, lugs on my spare tire. So if I ever need to change a tire on the road, I got my jack and all that in my boat crate back there, uh, which you saw in the previous video of what I carry in there. Um, and then my socket wrench so I can change the tire quick. So again, this is all stuff that'll never leave the boat. Uh, there's a few more things I'm going to add to it. I'll do another rundown when I'm on the water on Sunday, but like I said, just two Planos, plenty of storage space, stuff that I will always need. I mean, you're cold, you need gloves, you need socks. It starts to rain, you got a poncho. You want a catfish slimy at night, you got, you know, plenty of good stuff. Your bungee cord breaks for whatever reason. So that would be that. So like I said... And look at all the space I still got. Plenty of space. I could put 15 of these in there. So just some tools and stuff that I'll always need. It's just a little battery gauge tester. So you connect it to the pause, the neg. You can see exactly what percent your battery is at. Can't recommend it enough. Uh, just in case, you know. If your Minn Kota reading's not working, hook it up 10 seconds. See exactly what your battery level's at. You got your little drain in the floor. Um, underneath... The co-pilot's chair. So I got my bow light, which is nice. Uh, the boat actually came with this little paddle. Um, it's nice to have two paddles, so this one came with it. It's very short though for a six foot man. That's not gonna do you much thrust, but you need a paddle. I have another one I'll show you in a second. So I keep this one under here. Make sure your flares are always good. I have four flares in here. They're not expiring until 2022. Then a brand new fire extinguisher, which I mounted down here just to be safe. So plenty of storage under there as well. Um, the pilot chair does not lift up, but it does fold down. <clears throat> Got a nice little pocket right here. I'm going to put a bungee cord or something across this. Oh, fist deep. Uh, low rants. Mount. Got your RPMs, got your fuel gauge, got your speedometer, nav lights, AC light, aerator build, the little horn. Um, then I put together my little keys, got the tongue key, uh, the rod locker, and the storage compartment have a lock on them, which are nice. And it also has this little phone holder thing too, which is cool. Little 12 volt outlet, which is nice. So I'm gonna get an adapter and put a USB charger in there. Um, plenty of leg room Move over here. Plenty of leg room underneath. I have my throwable floaty, which I always use as a foot pad. So that's nice to have down there as well. And then I got the little courtesy light. It's actually a lot brighter than it looks at night. Um, and then if you remember on the old boat, I had uh, 3M LEDs running along the underside of the gunnel and wired up to the courtesy light. I am going to do that again. It'll cost me $20 and give me more lighting. So rod locker, this will fit up to eight, seven and a half foot rods. I have my Frable in here. This is a hundred dollar net, but it's a lifetime warranty and it folds. Brand new, never used. So definitely nice to have down in there. Um, and then, like I said, the boat came with a paddle, but I've had this paddle. This is more suited for a bigger man like myself. And now you have two paddles. So if you got two or three guys on the boat, you do not want to have just one pedal. Uh, I guess if you have your Minn Kota too, that works, but if you're miles offshore and the Minn Kota's dead too, so second pedal. And then, I always thought this was interesting, so here's my stern clear light, and it's four feet tall, so it's angled right now, but hangs off the stern of the boat quite a bit. So again, it'll hold up to eight, seven and a half foot rods, nice and deep. I usually carry three rods with me, maybe four. Now that I have this storage space, um, it'd be very nice not to have the rods cluttering up the deck. I still might put bungees across. So while I'm out fishing with my two, three main rods, I can keep this closed, put the bungee cord right about where that seam is up there and keep them on the deck. But plenty of storage space. And in the meantime, I'm totally able to do that. So we got this little compartment here. Got my life jackets down in there and there's plenty more room. It's hard to tell, but um, they're stuffed in there, and I could probably fit three more life jackets of the same size. I have two adult extra larges in there, so it's nice to have two. Uh, plenty of deck space and plenty of bow transom space. All that good stuff. A lot of room, a lot of storage. And then we got our live well here up in the front. My old one was on the rear, a little unusual. 
I rarely use the live wall because I don't harvest what I catch. So I may use that as a cooler sometimes. But uh, yeah, very, very nice. I believe it's a 14 gallon, I want to say, or 16 gallon. <clears throat> then we got our bow seat up there too. Same mount as on the rear, threaded. Um, so I do have storage up here as well. I just bought this 12 pound river anchor um, with another 100 feet of rope. In Ohio, you have to have 200 feet of rope at least on your boat. So I have 100 here and then 150 more back in the stern. Um, and this is an absolutely mammoth compartment down here as well. It goes about three feet deep. Uh, too much space. If Canada and I, let's just say, are on the boat, we have our gear bags and then everything that we would bring for the day, there's still more than enough space for a third and maybe even a fourth person's gear. So we got our Minn Kota pedal. I'm gonna mount this. I didn't wanna get the deck mount, um, but there are plenty of threads on it, so I'm just gonna screw it in once I figure out exactly the position I want it to go into. And then you got your Minn Kota power. Like I was saying, you got your strap and your handle, and then your rubber sealed nav lights. There's one on the stern as well. Nice windscreen on the cockpit, which I did not have before. Definitely is gonna help with some spray. I mean, just look at all this room I got though. I'm sitting down right here. Cup holder up front. Um, so if you see on the gunnel, there's these tracks. Tracker patented, what's called Versa Track. So there's a notch on either end and then up at the bow and stern, these little notches right here. And they make rod holders, cup holders, fillet boards, all that good stuff that slide right into the track and you can position them wherever you want. So I'm gonna get a couple pieces, rod holders, cup holders, all that. And then when I'm done, I can just store them. Um, so comes in handy. Um, so that's basically it. Big boat, way more deck space. My old boat was 16 and a half foot. This is a 17 foot, uh, it's wider too, uh, but it is aluminum. Um, if you couldn't tell, I opted for the vinyl decks. Um, just having an older boat, my old boat was a 92, um, so you can see the vinyl decking. It was a few bucks more, but um, carpet gets matted and dirty when we're fishing muddy rivers, getting in and out of the boat and all that stuff. Uh, I definitely wanted to be able to keep the boat clean as possible. Um, I bought this boat with the intention of keeping it for at least 10 years. Um, and just the amount that we use it, I do not need the carpet getting destroyed and disgusting after two years. Because then once you start to clean it and brush it too, um, it gets very matted and uh, stained and this will dry much faster. I can literally take out all my accessories, spray it down, it'll drain. I can scrub it with a brush, um, be good to go. So vinyl decks, it was $500 more. Uh, than the carpet but aesthetically if I was ever to go sell it um, and just for my own personal satisfaction um, I think it's going to be uh, much more to my liking it's a little slick they had the protective sealant put on too um, so I'm assuming after I use it a few times it'll get less slick uh, no big deal though uh, part of the game so um, yeah that's basically it for right now um, like I said today's Friday or Thursday uh, I'll be taking it out this coming Sunday. We're going to go to one of the local lakes. Um, it is still pretty cold out. It's only been in the 40s and 50s the past few days. So if I catch a stray bite, totally fine. Um, if not, I just need to get the motor breaking in anyway. So by the time that April comes around, um, I won't be having to putz around. If I have to break in the last four or five hours, first couple trips, fine. But I'm going to get a jump start with the good weather. Become familiar with how it runs and everything. Um, and... The first three hours are the biggest pain in the butt as far as breaking it in. Just get that out of the way. So <clears throat> I'll do a tour tutorial on the water on Sunday. Uh, excited to see how the Minn Kota is going to hold up. Excited to see how my tackle will all be stored. And I'm actually going through all my tackle downstairs yesterday and tonight. Uh, but I got more than enough space. I only usually fish two men. And if I bring a third guy on the boat or Mrs. Puff Puff, um, you know, the more gear, the more cluttered things can be, but with the amount of storage in here, uh, I don't think it's going to be an issue whatsoever. So um, that's about it for right now. Uh, subscribe, like. Again, the Tracker Pro 170. Um, cannot recommend it enough. I bought it from Tracker a Boat Outlet. They actually have one at the local Cabela's, which is nice, because I thought I was going to have to go to Columbus, which is a two-and-a-half-hour drive. 
they had all kinds of incentives. I bought it in boat show weekend, so there was a huge discount there. Um, they gave me a $250 Bass or Cabela's Bass Pro gift card for buying it from the Tracker Outlet at the store, which is nice instead of just going to the Tracker Outlet and getting nothing. Um, plus the three year uh, everything warranty, the motor, the trolling motor, the screen. Uh, so three years of that. Plus since I bought it during boat show weekend, I got an extra two years. So this boat, every single piece on it is protected for five years. I mean, you can't beat that five years. Um, plus a lifetime warranty on the hull. It was too good of a deal to pass up. Um, so yeah, so we'll see you out there Sunday. Uh, I'm already just relaxing on it, just enjoying the nice weather. And uh, hopefully we'll catch some fish on it. Not anticipating any fish. Like I said, gonna run it around, do some fishing in between, get familiar with everything, but uh, we'll see how it goes. And I'll get back to you, so. Puff Puff rolling in style now. Brand new boat. Uh, she does not have a name yet, but I'm thinking Key Waden, which means Northwest Wind in Ojibwe. So, all right, well, I'm going to get her back in the garage, go work on my tackle, try to get this video up. So, Puff Daddies, subscribe, like, comment. Thank you, Puff Daddies.